I want to talk about COVID responses. There, there's a couple countries that, that did okay, and there are a couple countries that were dog shit, and they paid for it by being dog shit. Um, and their leadership is, is has has a very uh, clear uh, similarity, and that is that they are a bunch of capitalist neoliberal governments. Uh, so let's start with Brazil. What's going on in Brazil? Uh, well, Brazil has a, has a legitimate authoritarian as a as a as a president. Uh, his name is Jair Bolsonaro. Uh, he is a uh, he's a he's a terrible person. He you know was fine with the rainforest burning down. Uh, lied to ranchers about getting land there and shit like that. Um, he's a legitimate authoritarian. He wants to go back to having a military rule in Brazil. He basically didn't take this pandemic seriously, didn't really do any sort of like stay-at-home order or lockdown measures or any of that sort of stuff, um, didn't provide his uh, populace with any sort of a financial incentive to to stay locked down, just, just was kind of a dick about it, and uh, and now hospitals are overrun and they are running out of oxygen. That's what they're saying. They're running out of oxygen, right? Uh, why? Because they chose profit over people. Because he wanted to keep the economy open and make sure that banks were running properly. Uh, you could have very easily done that by, you know, locking things down, going into d- delivery only for restaurants and small businesses and things of that sort, and then giving them money to make sure that they don't collapse, to make sure that people don't go bankrupt and get evicted and wind up homeless. America is approaching Brazil. America might become the new Brazil. Because hospitals here are getting overrun because of the COVID variant and and the uh, politicization of of wearing a mask. Uh, You know, and and people just being generally irresponsible. I mean, for fuck's sake, I saw people celebrating when Biden was elected unmasked in the streets of D.C. Every time there was a Trump rally, I was like, great, COVID spikes, here we go. But what did the debate in America yield? Very similar to what the debate in Brazil, I'm sure, yielded, which is public health versus the economy. Not public health and the economy. Could You can both have a, a, a decent, thriving economy. It won't be, like, the greatest, but it'll still be okay. People won't be destitute. There won't be, you know, uh, miles and miles long of food lines everywhere. But people won't be destitute. They'll have something. There's no UBI, no healthcare plan, none of that sort of stuff. Uh, It was lockdown measures. Everybody stay inside, which, of course, ramped up, you know, more hypochondriac kind of paranoia. Um, And I'm not saying that this virus isn't serious. It very much is. But let's be reasonable about this. It's not like if you step outside and take a deep breath, you're going to die. Obviously, don't go into an enclosed location with a lot of different people without wearing a mask during a a pandemic. But, you know. So they kind of perpetuated the civil unrest by uh, not giving people a UBI, not giving people a financial incentive to uh, to stay away from work. because capitalism thrives on that. It thrives on, on, on labor. And so people needed to go to work. So even if they got sick, they were going to work. Which in a pandemic is a fucking bad idea. And then the Democrats scrambled, right? Because they were like, hey, you got to wear a mask. Do it for your countrymen. Do it for your fellow citizens. Do it for grandma. And they scrambled to get this collective message out there of like, oh, let's get through this together. When... All they've preached is neoliberal individualism. It's, it's that, that that it's you first, yeah. Like that's what they preached for for fucking forty years, fifty years. 
And then they got to go, no, 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 that's not how we're living our lives anymore. Oh, I'm sorry, but you fucking beat it into people's brains. That's what they know. You can't just undo your propaganda in a matter of a day because, you know, that's not how that works. You've systematically created a system that, or systematically created a culture, sorry, that is rooted to collapse itself during something like a pandemic. Now, of course, Biden is saying that he's not going to shut down the economy. He is going to shut down the virus. How are you going to do that? You're going to shut down. That's a nice little kitschy phrase you can say, but how the fuck are you actually going to do that? So he said national mask mandate. Everybody will be required to wear a mask when they go into into buildings. It turned out to be a, a federal ma- national mask mandate, uh, which is not what he specified it would be. He very much, he very much pitched it like it was going to be a... Federal, like a nationalized mask mandate. Like everybody is going to be wearing a mask. They're going to be required by law to wear one. That's how he presented it. So it's not, this is not me making an argument of, yeah, we need to make a law that says masks are a requirement during this pandemic and blah, blah, blah. Like that's, I'm, I'm pointing out the hypocrisy of what he says. And I'm pointing out the technicality that he's going to get it on. He's going to present it one way and then do it in a different way. That's what I'm pointing out. How the fuck is he going to shut down this virus? I have no fucking clue. But he says shit like, shut down the virus. Shut down the virus. We're going to cancel the virus. Maybe you could tell people that they need to stay at home. Limit, federally fucking limit how many people can be gathered uh, in an indoor dining location or an entertainment venue. uh, And, you know, um, have them make sure that people are wearing masks and offer people masks and... I don't know, offer people a UBI so that they will actually stay home and they can actually stimulate the economy instead of fucking bailing out Wall Street over and over again. Could be something to do. But they didn't. And he's he's barely giving us $2,000. That's still an argument right now, whether that's going to happen or not. Now, Sweden tried um, herd immunity, and that didn't work out. Uh, so, again, these are all these are all countries that practice neoliberalism and, and focused on how do we, you know, get the economy going. Let's choose the economy over public health instead of figuring out how to incorporate the economy and keep the uh, keep uh, the public safe and healthy. Neoliberalism pit health and the economy, and it made everything worse. Uh, definitely having a UBI in healthcare during this time would have decreased the amount of uh, unrest we saw, it would decrease the amount of arguments that were happening. That hyper politicization of, 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 of masks and, you know, uh, things like that. Businesses wouldn't be suing the government saying that these measures are unconstitutional, which happened in Pennsylvania. Now, there, there's a call for a lawsuit against Bolsonaro in the ICC uh, for choosing, you know, basically the corporate donors to make sure that corporations are going to be uh, fined during this pandemic over his people. And the article I read was from Vijay Prashad, Vijay Prasad and Noam Chomsky, uh, who called for a citizen tribunal against these neoliberals. Uh, I'm all for that. That sounds awesome. I, I hope we figure out a way to do that. I think I think that it should be... Uh, there should be a citizen oversight committee in, in every legal case. Um, that, that, that should be a necessity. I think the, the public should determine, you know what happens to some of these people what happens in instances like this a leader like Bolsonaro should go to prison for what he did he should be uh, you know taken out of office Uh, I would love to know the details of a citizen tribunal but it sounds like a great idea to me Uh, but the point of this is you know neoliberalism 
which people like Jair Bolsonaro, Joe Biden, Donald Trump, Nancy Pelosi, Mitch McConnell, Chuck Schumer, uh, Boris Johnson, they all practice. And it has not worked. It has failed us miserably. And it's time to implement a new system. That's what we need. We need a whole fucking new system. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. And go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H 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 -A, and I hope to see you at the next video. Thanks again.